All right. Okay. Uh, so again, this is the first class of uh, geomechanics. Um, we're going through uh, the table of contents. So what we're going to see, let me do just fast review. First of all, mechanics, continuum mechanics, mechanics of the polar solid. And we're going to talk about linear elasticity, solid linear elasticity with the final element method. Uh, calculating in situ stresses from uh, wellbore data. We'll see that uh, for this application, it's very useful to have well logs that are going to allow us to extend some of the uh, knowledge that we have to the wellbore environment and also to the subsurface. And we're going also to uh, work with the theory of pore elasticity that helps you correct for effective stress but also helps you understand many more things than that. Like, for example, the concept of undrained loading, which is a loading in which you squeeze a porous solid, like, for example, a sponge, but the fluid does not come out uh, at the same time that you squeeze. So when you squeeze a porous solid, pore pressure builds up inside and uh, makes the deformation to depend on time and to depend on pore pressure. And that Pore elasticity is going to help us uh, solve that problem. In addition to that, also uh, to the part of pore elasticity and how changes of pore pressure affect the deformation of a porous medium, we're going to see how temperature affects the deformations and the stresses in a porous medium, and also how uh, chemical changes, chemical loadings, also uh, can impart uh, changes of stress or strains uh, in a formation. Uh, this is an example that applies for CO2 geological storage. Uh, in many places, we inject cold fluids with a temperature different than the one of the reservoir. If you inject the cold fluid, that's going to affect the stresses in the reservoir. If, in addition, some of these fluids react with the minerals inside the reservoir, that's also going to add uh, an additional uh, complexity to what goes on inside the reservoir and how it, uh, uh, how it reacts against injection of the fluid. For example, it's not the same to inject here an acid that may create wormholes, that may create uh, a lot of compaction in the reservoir that inject a fluid that doesn't have any chemical reactivity at all. Uh, so we're going to see uh, some of that uh, too. And uh, um, we already said a little bit about the, the part of temperature. So I'm going to skip uh, this one. And uh, very important too, we're going to see how uh, rocks fail. And what is the impact of failure uh, on stresses, on deformation, but also very important on permeability. One of the main um, advantages now of, uh, of geomechanics is that now we understand better how we can manipulate permeability through, for example, fracturing, something that we didn't know very well uh, a couple of decades before, but now we're starting to understand that much uh, uh, more as time passes by. Um, we understand how fractures propagate, uh, and we understand how we can use that to our advantage uh, to, for example, uh, produce oil and gas from tight reservoirs. And uh, that's going to be related to how rocks form, uh, how rocks fail, and, uh, and we're going to see also that in detail. And towards the end of the course, we're going to talk about hydraulic fracturing uh, more in detail. And we're going to see the models that allows us to predict how a fracture propagates, how, for example, pressure changes in the wellbore, and also what are all the basic equations that go into a fracture simulator. Uh, so, uh, if you have to use a fracture simulator in the future, uh, you know what is going on uh, in there. And last, also, we're going to see throughout the course 
how you can measure some of these parameters in the laboratory. Uh, because uh, very often we use uh, seismic data, we use wellbore data to build mechanical models, but in order to calibrate those measurements and to make sure that our models are giving us something that it's observing the field, they need to be calibrated with field observations, but also with uh, laboratory uh, measurements. Okay, so that's a quick overview of what we're going to see in the course. And let me come back here to the to the resume, to the, uh, to the syllabus. <coughs> and I have a question for you guys. And it's about, oh, this is wrong. I don't know where, okay. No, this is okay. Uh, do you guys have something going on from five to six on Monday and Wednesday? No? I, I guess you guys don't wanna come here on Friday at 4 p.m., right? <laughs> Um, so what I propose, uh, not for this week because we have to catch up, but for next week and, and after that, the, uh, we meet here Monday and Wednesday from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Uh, Friday, uh, we, we don't meet. Is, is that okay? Yeah? Okay. So I just want to make sure, okay, that everyone is okay with, with that because it's some of you is not, then we have to find some another, another way of you know, solving this issue, but uh, I'd prefer that we just meet two times per week and, uh, and just Monday and Wednesday. Um, so today is Wednesday. Are you guys okay to stay until 5.30 today? All right, okay, so, so we'll do that. Um, uh, probably on Friday we'll just meet uh, one hour. I don't want to make it too long either for you guys uh, on Friday. I think that's going to be enough. Uh, okay, so fantastic. Yes. I was still going to travel like one hour or five hour after. Um, oh, you're right. You're right. So, well, I, I'm going to have to change this from uh, 5.30 to 6.30, something like that. Or I'll, I'll find something. Don't worry, okay? I'll still have some office hours, but I'll define that uh, later. Okay, uh, good. So in the syllabus, I try to put to uh, to put here as accurate as possible the things that we're going to see every week, and also uh, where you can find that in in all the books I showed before. So if you want to read a little bit more about that, uh, you have here uh, all the references. Also, uh, if you stop at my office, uh, uh, I might share a copy of some files I have related to this. So um, just let me know, okay? Uh, but uh, again, I strongly recommend from these books to have this one and that one. Uh, the other ones go a little bit more in detail on some topics, but, but these, these two are very good and are very comprehensive, especially the first one. Uh, all right, so uh, here in the syllabus, I have a few more things uh, about the midterms. Uh, so I'm proposing, I think, a midterm in the week of October 14th, and that probably will be in class, and that might be on a Friday, okay? Uh, it, it, we'll see, we'll see how we get to, to that point, but if you, you have some conflict, please let me know, but it's going to be during the lecture time. So in theory, you shouldn't have any conflict with it. And, and then we're gonna have another midterm towards the end. They are going to be just two midterms, and at the end, there's going to be a final project presentation. So basically, I like that, that you present a topic of your own related to your research or not, but related to geomechanics. And somehow you can apply what you learn in this class 
to that, um, that would be uh, the idea, okay? Uh, I know that some of you may not have a research project right now, uh, so the other option is to do a literature review, or if you talk with me and uh, you're interested about some project in particular, uh, you can also do that, okay? So I don't think we have to discuss that right now, so there's plenty of time for that, but at some point, you will have to give me an abstract of that, which is, it's gonna be due in October. And uh, at the end of the semester, you're gonna have to make a presentation, which is going to impact your final grade and uh, is going to be given by you guys. So we're gonna do like peer assessment. I'm also going to contribute to that, uh, but uh, you guys are going to grade yourselves, okay? All right, so um, there are a few more details here about, uh, about the syllabus, but uh, I, I guess you, you, can guys, you guys can read that uh, in detail later on, on on your own. If you have any questions, just let me know, okay? All right, so any questions so far? Yes? Yes, for example, yes, yes, yes. For example, if you're working on fracture characterization, mm -hmm. uh, that would be a great project to talk about. And uh, you can present something about your, your own research that you already did or, or you're going to do during these three months and add some of the contents, uh, contents that we're going to see in class. So I would prefer it if it's something related to your research because then you use the class and take advantage of it uh, for your uh, own uh, benefit. Okay? Thank you. Uh, any other question? Before we go into the, into the math? No? Okay. Oh. Yeah. Uh, do you have like a page requirement on the final project? No, no. I'm, I'm not going to ask you a paper, I'm going to ask you a presentation. Okay. And the presentation is going to be about 12 minutes. Okay. So you should think about 10 slides, yeah. okay? But 10 slides full of meat, okay? Not, not uh, just 10, you know, uh, very sparse uh, uh, slides. Okay, so let's go, let's get to work. Uh, first of all, uh, what I'm going to do every week that I start a topic uh, is going to be to introduce the topic that we're going to talk about with an application problem. Uh, for this week is this project number one. And uh, I have some bad news for you guys. There's going to be an assignment every single week. There's gonna be a few weeks in which probably will be one assignment for two weeks in a row. But for many weeks, it's going to be uh, deliverable uh, every single week. And this is the first one, okay? All right, let's see what we have over here. Here you have what is called a stress log. So basically, uh, this is a plot of many things as a function of, in the y-axis, depth. So uh, it's, not, it's not in there, but in this axis, uh, we have depth, okay? All right, let me kill the other focus. And for example, in the, in the first track, you see uh, mechanical stratigraphy. Uh, the sky blue uh, areas are meant to be carbonate. The green areas are meant to be 
uh, a more uh, quartzitic or clay-rich rock with less carbonate. And you can see that in the second track too. In the second track, you have the volume fraction of calcite. Okay, so let me ask you, uh, what is the average uh, concentration of calcite in this rock through the entire formation, top to bottom? Something like that, right? 20%. Uh, but there are some regions in which you go over 40%, some points that even uh, reach over here to 60%. Okay, so let's see what else we have in here. Uh, the third track shows four things. Shows pore pressure, this line over here. Shows total vertical stress, the red line. shows horizontal minimum total stress in green. And the last one in blue is the total horizontal maximum stress. And what you see here are the calculations of those stresses with a particular model uh, based on linear elasticity and also on pore elasticity. So, we're not going to see the model right now, but later you're going to be able to do the same that these people did in, in this paper. Uh, but let's talk about what then you see over here. Then we say pore pressure and stresses. These quantities are going to be very important uh, because, the, for example, the minimum stress, which in this case is the horizontal minimum stress, that's going to determine what is the minimum pressure required for hydraulic fracturing. Each of these points, this one, that one, that one, uh, are not models, are data from the field. They were calculated uh, with a fracture diagnostic injection test and 